From a homeless person who threw a rock at the Mona Lisa so he'd get a warm bed in prison, to the man who was jealous of the woman in a Velasquez painting so he attacked it. People have odd motivations for vandalizing art, but the hunger for fame seems to be a popular reason. A 20-year-old man went to jail last month after punching a Picasso painting at London's Tate Modern. He said he did it as a performance and now he'll spend 18 months behind bars. But the famed museum is no stranger to such incidents. In 2012, a Polish man applied black ink over a Mark Rothko painting and called it an artistic act. There is also that Miami artist who smashed a work by Ai Weiwei on the floor. He was angry because he thought local artists weren't getting the recognition they deserve. And the list goes on. Let's talk to Kevin. Tevin. He's a professor of international art education. Hi, Kevin. So, let me just put Hello. it straight here. I really don't understand how to draw a line between vandalism and a performance art piece, really. Yes, it's a difficult question, uh, but I think in this case, uh, it's not such a difficult call. Uh, because there really um, was no articulated uh, motive behind the, the attack. Uh, it seemed that um, it was done uh, from an immature perspective and without a kind of broader understanding of uh, what the repercussions uh, would be, the responsibility of this young man and uh, the repercussions. And I think ironically, this will bring less attraction to him and more attraction to the Picasso piece mm -hmm. uh, once it's restored, because people probably want to see the restored piece. Okay, so the artist uh, told the guards at the Tate Modern that this was a performance act, but I understand that's not enough for you. So when is it a good uh, defense so that you're like, okay, this is not really vandalism, it could be something else. What could have been said? Well, I think, in first, it's performative. So for sure he did something and it has consequences. So that's performative. Uh, he, he punched a hole in a painting as if I jumped out a window, there would be a reaction that's performative. But that in and of itself doesn't uh, fulfill the kind of um, broader discourse or understanding of what performance art is within the broader art world. And I think there is, of course, differences of opinion, but there is a long history of performance art in the art world. And I think how that is defined by the institutions really makes a difference. Just saying it doesn't make it so. Okay, so um, I remember, for example, the Polish artist case that I just mentioned. Uh, he was actually sentenced and he said that it was, he did it on behalf of his self-created yellowism movement. And he said that he just wanted to make an artistic statement. So that seems like, you know, he had an idea about what he was doing, apart from just vandalizing it, which under, I understand it should be a crime. But seriously, I really don't understand where a judge should be, you know, deciding whether something is art or not. It really comes down to that, doesn't it? I think so. And I mean, I think that, well, I mean, it is a criminal act. Uh, and I think that it depends on what the criminal act is. We've had artists that have burned down banks. Uh, there are artists that have done hor horrific things to human beings and animals and institutions. Uh, and I think it's really the larger responsibility, societal responsibility and consequences that need to be taken into consideration. Right now, there's a great debate going on in the United States, for example, about these statues, these Confederate mm -hmm. flat, uh, statues that are being vandalized. And I think it's a good example. Should they be vandalized, taken down? And that's all for political reasons as well. Um, so, you know, I don't know that there's a definitive line, but I think in th this case, from what I've read and understand, I think it's pretty clear um, that uh, I would not call this uh, performance art. And I think that um, the sentence is probably correct, given how much money it's going to take to restore that, that artwork. Okay, so the demolition of uh, monuments, like colonial monuments, or, I don't know, communist monuments, would you call that vandalism? Well, it's a, another great question. Um, I think it depends if it's part of a revolution, a revolutionary movement, and it's, uh, you know, su uh, supported by a mass amount of people, and it's a top, you know, it includes governments and so on. I think it makes a very big difference. Uh, it, whether it's that or someone that spray paints something on the bottom of a monument. So I think it's the broader context and it's the same with this piece. So it's how the, the, the art world, so to speak, defines and understands these acts. 
and how they fit in. And in terms of uh, social movements and um, activism, it's the same way. Um, and it all depends on context. So, mm. uh, yeah, okay. I think, you know, again, it's a fine line. Okay, when you say that it depends on the context, uh, one interesting example would, would definitely be Banksy shredding his own artwork. Could that be vandalism? Yeah. I mean, it, it has his own consent, but then, uh, you know, art really, what, who does art really belong to is the question here. So mm. what would you say about that case? Well, that's an interesting case because I think, you know, the artist himself destroyed the work and whether it was known and to whom is, is still an open question. And I think uh, there's also a long history of that as well. You have Robert Rauschenberg uh, decades ago buying a de Kooning drawing uh, and then erasing the de Kooning drawing. Um, but he didn't go into a museum, steal it off the wall, break the glass and erase it. So. Um, you know, it was a performative piece and there was uh, a lot of symbolic meaning behind it. I think in Banksy's case, it's, it's the same thing. And it only made the, the artwork perhaps even more valuable, brought more attention to the artist. So, um, you know, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Mm -hmm. um, it, yeah. Yeah. And the Banksy piece is definitely more expensive now, but it wouldn't be the yeah. same for this Picasso painting, right? No, uh, definitely not. And I, from what I read, it depends how they restore the piece uh, and, and how much it will take and what it will look like uh, in the end. But I do think that the piece, again, may attract more attention now. Uh, same thing happened uh, in Oslo with the Munch uh, artwork that was um, uh, stolen and then other pieces that have been vandalized. People then line up to see the restored work or the work that's brought back. So it draws attention sometimes more to the artwork that's been vandalized than the person that has vandalized it. Uh, so you really have to think these things through. And I think especially if you're a young artist, you have to really take responsibility for what you're going to do and think through the consequences. I think five minutes of fame uh, isn't worth it in this case, at least that's my opinion. Okay. It was really informative. Thank you so much, Kevin Tavin, for, for joining us on Showcase today.